I'm going to kick in the ball. So spread your legs, put your hands behind your back. And I did it. You know, I was like, oh, look at that. I'm in buds. I dropped something. I'm going to be punished. I'm going to get kicked in the ball. Okay. Grab my legs. He stood by. He's like, brace. And he's like, are you a fucking idiot? And I was like, how do you get the fuck out of here, dummy? And then he kicked him in the ding ding. All right, so as we got a bang alert, man. I'm on the phone with Dan Brown. He called me about all this Captain Geary stuff going down. People saying, oh, the cadre were loose or something like that. And I was thinking the difference between those classes or instructors and our class when we had that instructor that shall not be named, who, who was name absolutely name out of fucking hand. Who, Gekka or Decker? No, Gekka was fair. Psychopathic and scary as shit. But <laughs> fair. That's, that's, let's give Gekka his due. He was fair. The other guy was a just bonkers. Yeah. Absolutely bad. However, you remember when they came at us in all honesty, trying to protect the class from his egregious abuses that other classes had told him about, we clammed up tighter than a oyster and we're like, nope, don't know what you're talking about. What's oh, that one? We he did. fell. <laughs> they have an Remember investigation. He fell. You know, got, our class wouldn't say a goddamn word. And the instructors, I got pulled aside. Instructor Arno, LPO of second phase, was like, damn, he's a piece of shit. We want to get rid of him. These are not fair things. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm very young and innocent. I'm sure there's someone smarter than me that can tell you all the things you want to know. I'm just happy to be here. And everybody I understood, it went through. They couldn't, they got nothing from our class, which was the class that he was teaching and the one he got to be in Hell Week, which he yeah. wasn't even supposed to be at. But you, <laughs> you know, Dan, I tell you, you know how it was, bro. Like, I didn't know, I tell everybody, like, how bad was us? I had no idea how bad it was. I'd only been there once, I didn't have any frame of reference. And I was giving it to the instructors as much as they were giving it to me. So I gave, right? Like, you, you should listen to it. It's impressive listening to the captain speak there. For one, I've never heard an 06 speak. Um, I've heard lectures, I've heard talks, but I've never heard him speak, just speak. Um, sounds like anyone else we know. You know, he's our age, he's just like us, he's exactly the same dude. He just happens to be an 06. With all the same problems and loves. And Dude, I just found. So, you know, I'm going to have to put an APB out in class 217, Dan. Um, mm. I was just watching. I just did the last reaction video this morning for Bud's class 234, you know. And Good shit. I saw our plaque on the wall. So oh, I cool. Th I think Ryan Angle was trying to find it. I, I, I got to. I put $1,000 down that somebody in our class got it hanging on our wall. Our plaque? Like 217's plaque. You're in 218, right? Yep. You Why wouldn't it be at Buzz? Uh, so I, I, apparently it goes 216, 218, and then it continues. Oh, well, that's no surprise. These are some dirty fucking thieves. No, oh, we were bad. Yeah. I, I, I was sitting in a room in Iraq, North Iraq. Uh, yeah, for, well, shit, man. It must be like six years ago now. And uh, we were talking about the Kurds, and it was Kurds I was speaking to, and they were talking about the troubles and how Saddam Hussein was really mean to them and did these horrible things. But we've been drinking, and one of the Kurds turned to me and he's like, "But we were bad." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, you did. You know, there was a revolt." He's like, "Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, in fairness to Saddam, we revolted." against the dom it wasn't any fucking mystery as to what would happen to us you know oh my god he gassed us ah, saddam hussein it wasn't like oh i wonder if it'll be a proportionate response to our rebellion yeah it's crazy <laughs> all the kurds are like yeah we thought something horrible might happen you know we, we Dan, are was you an instructor in ptrr a, a funny guy yes ptrr did we have i don't even yep. remember no instructors in ptrr oh uh, they were just there they weren't mean or nothing they were just there you know um i remember one of my first pts uh and this instructor i watched him do it a few more times they're just fucking with us you know i mean i think instructor king was actually in ptrr you know it was just kind of a holding place for us right and i had a signet ring which i unfortunately lost since then you don't know anything when you get to buds you're just sitting around in barracks whatever the 
TTRR barracks where they're like, hit the beach and you're there. So I, you know, I had a signet ring. I, I tried to put it in a shirt pocket or something. And uh, we were doing a three hour beach PT, you know, just a standard, hey, welcome to Bud. Here's the sand and this is a PT. Good time. Uh, somehow I dropped it throughout that and somebody found it and they gave it to the instructor and he's like, does anybody miss me? And I was like, holy shit, that's me. And uh, he dragged me up there and then just quiet to the side. He's like, all right, now I'm going to kick you in the balls. So spread your legs, put your hands behind your back. And I did it. You know, I was like, oh, look at that. I'm in buds. I dropped something. I'm going to be punished. I'm going to get kicked in the balls. Okay. Spread my legs. He stood by. He's like, brace. And he's like, are you a fucking idiot? And I was like, how do you get the fuck out of here, dummy? Go away. And I was like, oh, so we're not getting kicked in the balls? He's like, no. Oh, my God. And he would do that just to see how students, and, you know, you're like, oh, I want to be a SEAL. Apparently, you need to get kicked in the balls. Okay. And, you know, it wasn't like, you know, I'm a fucking new guy. What do I know? I've been here eight and a half minutes. You know, we're getting kicked in the balls. No? Oh, okay. Oh, I'm bad. No, <laughs> you, no. you don't know anything. You have no idea. Like, you you, you don't know. I, I tell everybody, I showed up. I didn't know there was three phases of training. I knew at some point I was going to do scuba. I had took scuba class because of that. I didn't know what the island was. I didn't know third phase. I like, bro. You know when I got there, I was out of shape, bro. I was in survival mode from day one, and so the guy didn't fucking. Know. I don't want it to be hard. Like I thought it was supposed to be really fucking hard, so I was all fired up about that. You know? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, you're good. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, I was just. I went to Great Lakes boot camp, and in boot camp. I got a safety violation at the boot camp obstacle course. They called it like a confidence course. Uh, there was probably a fence about six feet high that you had to climb up and climb down on the other side, you know? Woo. Okay. And it's all shredded tires in indoor shredded tire, you know, fucking ball pit is practically yeah, yeah, what it was. Yeah. Um, I want to be a SEAL. I'm an outdoorsy strong. I, I did graduate SEAL training, so I wasn't, you know, a complete wimp. Um, I did not have the physicality that I should have, but I was a young boy and I, I had, you know, resilience. So I grabbed the thing and I've been hopping fences my whole damn life. And I learned to do it early. You grab a fence, you get your chest up and then you flip your legs over and you sort of vault over the side of the fence. And I did that. Oh my God. Woo! Two pregnant chicks come running out going, that's so unsafe. You could say that. And I wasn't a lot. I ran like the next obstacle was a like a little you know two by four like a balance beam you know all of two feet off the ground and i ran across it and i was whistled at again and i was pulled off the confidence course for recklessly being dangerous i was like so i had no expectation that the seal training could be anything other this is the navy you know how much harder could it be damn uh, who was the kid in our class that fell off the slide for life three times and they kicked him out? Do you remember first phase? The kid, he fell off once. He didn't get hurt. He fell off twice. And they were like, if you fall off the slide for life again, you're out of here. And he mm -hmm. fell off again. I was like, oh, my God. It's like 25 feet. Now it's not. Now there's a big-ass berm. The Army made him put a big-ass berm underneath it. But Pussies. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, just listening to the captain speak on, I love this, by the way, uh, Captain Gary. Well, I'll be referencing him because I just Captain spent Gary. time to listen to. Um, so th let me say this because I'm going to throw some fucking straight daggers, okay? Fair enough, fair enough. Travis Lively loves the man, loves him. So if Travis Lively loves him, he's a good-ass dude, okay? That's I all I'll say right say. now. I will start with that. I, so I am not a special guy you know I, I did the minimum navy enlistment ability to be a seal uh i have lived a life though i'm you know turning 47 here in a few days and i've been in war zone a very 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 long time how does one do that and not be in the military well i don't know figure it out uh he says some really accurate and important things that only someone with a really good common sense and common and lot of experience says, for example, his arguments against risk mitigation versus risk management and the understanding of the nuances of that space. Just because you do a thing doesn't make it not risky anymore. So he hates the term risk mitigation, which I am 100% in agreement with. A dangerous thing is a dangerous thing. And how you manage it reduces the 
probable outcome to be negative, but it doesn't make it not danger. You know, no, it's still dangerous. Not, not at a all. A dangerous thing is a dangerous thing. And, and that, you, you try acknowledgement to... of that dangerous thing is critical. He actually uses the slide for life as one of those examples. He said when they had a net, people started falling off more <laughs> because it wasn't as dangerous. So people didn't give it its due respect. It's dangerous. You get on it. If you're going to fall, maybe you should hold on for another three or four feet so that you don't fall from the tippy tippy top and you fall from where it's less deadly. I, dangerous things are always dangerous. War zones are survived by doing the least dangerous thing as safely as you can. That doesn't make it not dangerous. It just makes it the least dangerous thing. Or conversely, the most violent thing as violently as you can um, if you're in more of the DA side of things. Uh, so it's crazy. So listening to him, I would have loved, I'm sure everybody under him appreciate him as a boss because that is a thinking man who does not seem hypercritical, but seems very exacting in his standards, but excellent. Uh, and that is a very baseline journeyman interpretation of what I can listen to from him. But I, I was impressed. I will say this, okay? Having known him and the and the head of training out there, because the head, head of training was beef. So, <laughs> I, and I, you don't know him. He's a couple classes behind us. Um, wait. Yeah, he's a class behind us. Not not 217, but he's a Naval Academy class behind us. He's a 98 ah. in the Academy. And so he played football with all of us. Um, but, like, that's the whole thing, right? Like, I know what was going on out there. I have five kids in the class, man. When I asked them if they got woke up every hour, there was like, no. Was there a medical inspection every hour? No. Was there medical personnel on site with an ambulance? No. Like, they had to call a phone number to get somebody to come over. And it still took them like five minutes or 10 minutes to come over after he had died. It wasn't like they just showed right up. Like they That's did. Interesting. They didn't get into the specifics of the day. They were not. Um, so, so I'm going to say this. Cause that was the first question I asked. How does someone die after hell week? Right. How does someone die in their room after hell week? Not in the hospital. And the answer weren't we, weren't we woken up every hour on the hour? Every hour. And we slip. If you don't remember, you had to sleep with your door open. So your door, door was, open. was open and both drawers were underneath the mattress with the feet elevated, correct? Yep. yep. And so we hydrated. I force hydrated. I was actually pulled out of my bathtub by two brown shirts. I'd gone to sleep in my bathtub and I was being a little belligerent, like, you know, sort of sleepwalks, talk, fighting them. And they're like, no. Nope. And I was like trying to negotiate. No, but I just want one, you know, doing the toddler negotiation. But this side, and they're like, no. Nope. And I was manhandled into my bed uh, and told to be there and shut up. You're, you know, you know, it's just so I don't <laughs> two enlisted Joes telling you how it's gonna be. <laughs> and and That's they had it was. they didn't have any of that. Really, they didn't have any. They got given. Now this is the crazy part. Okay, they got given a piece of paper that said. If they contacted 911 or went to any outside medical facility, they would immediately be thrown out of training. Yeah, we did that too. You may not remember it. Oh, we have one too? Yep. Oh, shit. The okay. reasoning behind it was... Okay, because, okay. Um, the reasoning behind that was because our symptoms don't go to what we have. They go to strange and infectious tropical diseases, and they alert like CDC, and people freak the fuck out. When bud students accidentally go to Balboa or to the regular medical system, they are not treated correctly. They're not treated for SIPs. They're not treated for the things that we have. They're treated for, you know, meningital caucus, southern Ugandan <laughs> monkeypox or <laughs> yeah. whatever the hell. Because, I, I mean, it, it, our blood... Spectrums are so fucked, the white blood cells and stuff like that. Um, I remember a lecture that they gave where we were informed on that. I remember most of the things I've been told. It's a terrifying thing in life uh, where they discussed why they don't want us dialing 911 and calling for outside medical help. But we need to immediately seek medical help from medical, from but, the but doctors and the staff that they have. They were downstairs, I want to say in that little room on the first floor. And there was an ambulance parked there. Yes. 
Because I can remember on Saturday when we we went to go eat. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. I don't remember much of like how we a- ate on Saturday. But Marie I remember calendars. Okay, there was uh, there was a there was a ambulance, and there yeah. was some foreman down there, and a couple other things. They had oh, yeah. they had none of that, bro. They had none of it. Eh, from who? Who do you hear that from? The and five, again, don't don't forget guys, that the-, the five guys that just graduated from Hell Week. And yeah, I wouldn't trust. Now, this is just me. I wouldn't trust the in-person recollection of a Hell Week graduate hang, person. Hang on, hang on. And the three, <laughs> and the three support dudes that supported Hell Week. That is a better witness. Yeah, uh, because I wouldn't. You know, I couldn't remember anything. Buds and six eighteen, and how one finishes the showers and the relief and the pizzas and the the. I mean, the ability of your body to swell up <laughs> between the beach. And six eighteen after your pizza and two Gatorades is shocking. You're like, how, you're how like, did this happen? They're like, tie your boots now because you ain't gonna be able to in an hour. And you're just like, poof, your whole body goes thunk, and and the agony starts and the pain actually starts. That was weird. It, it was. I just remember looking at my feet and like, how did my feet get that big? That like they're the size of basketballs, right? And I'm like, yeah, how, scary. How are they that big? So any one of the other major things that I thought was just absolutely insane kyle mullins was running the drug ring his car was the car where they kept all the drugs at because two of the guys in the class were like jake i'm beat up what do you think if i start doing this and i was like stay away Mm -hmm. because i'm going to tell you this those guys get burned and burned bad so like i had heard about i heard about him I mean, shit, maybe second week of first phase I heard about it. Oh, really? You heard that he was a guy and he was doing stuff, huh? No, because he was the guy that kept all the drugs in his car for the whole class. Mm-hmm. And, and now it's come out, apparently, that he had somebody driving on that was hooking him up, too. But my guys, like, he was the ringleader. He kept everything in his car. My two cents for him, it is he played ball, seeing his body at Yale, right? Like, pulling up the pictures of him at Yale playing football. Uh, he looks like he's on the sauce at Yale too. And his heart was twice as large as normal, which normally takes a long time to get that way when you're juicing and doing everything else you shouldn't be doing. Well, especially in your formative years, you know, especially in your developmental years, if you were maybe all the way in high school or something now, of that range. Yeah. And here's the um, other, here's the other part of it. Having dug it all up last year and talked to my guys in the inside, you know, he got kicked out of Yale on a sexual assault. I'm not I'm not saying he did it or not, but I know he didn't graduate from Yale. He's not a Yale graduate. And then the he other was an enlisted man or an officer. He was in enlisted. Beds. Enlisted. Okay. Enlisted in beds. And then the other big kind of caveat is all the reports that he walked or got to 618 on his own. Like when I talk to my dudes, they're like, yo, he's in a wheelchair with an oxygen bottle. You know, and you uh, know the captain stated in this particular episode of the Sean Ryan show. He said that medically there was a report of raspy lungs and his knees were hurting and that throughout the pizza and Gatorade session, his knees started to hurt more and more and that they used a wheelchair to move him to 618 in the wheelchair at that time. But it didn't seem to be that it was, again, you know, I, I they didn't really get into the Friday afternoon. They didn't discuss Friday afternoon. But again, it doesn't seem like that's the charge. The allegations and such like that are more holistic. If if one could defend against a vibe, well, well here, here's what uh, I'm gonna, here's what I'm going to say. That's the problem. His, his mom has went Tasmanian devil. His mom tried to sue me, right? Like they sent me a cease and desist order because I had some vir- a viral video out there saying he got weak genes, right? And she said, "You don't know what you're talking about." And I said, and, and my response to her was, "Your son was on drugs." PEDs, testosterone, Viagra, uh, anabolic steroids, name the cocktail he was on, okay? And that contributed to his death. I'm not saying he should have died, right? And obviously, I wasn't saying this to her. I was saying this to her proxy. But I was just like, look, I ain't saying nothing wrong. I'm not disparaging him. I'm saying it's a sad thing that he died, but there's a whole bunch of factors here. But my factors are, like, there's no reason someone should die after Hell Week because they're not getting 45 minute medical checks. You know what I'm saying? Like he was coughing if, up. If, yeah. If, I, I, I can't speak to that. Uh, 
you know, wasn't there, don't have any evidence one way or the other. Um, Say, let me was, ask you this. You, yeah. you, had, you had, you were in 218, right? You were 217 and then you rolled mm -hmm. into 218. Did they talk about the two kids that died in 218 very much? Two kids that died in 218? So, you know, they had two kids drowning in the pool. When we were in second phase, they had two kids drowning in the swimming pool. Both in first phase. One kid they aspirated. They died, though, did they? No, no, they, they died. The one kid aspirated on his own vomit, and the other kid was underwater for eight seconds and died. Both of them died. So, obviously, they didn't talk about it. I don't, I don't think that was 218. If it was 218, I don't know nothing about it. I guess I didn't roll till third phase with that whole group of swimmers, with the 10 guys that rolled. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's odd. Um, I found I one. Of, I found one of the articles. Death. I don't. I don't think that was two eighteen. I, I. 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 Don't believe that's when that was. I do know that somebody died. I thought it was during the, like a simple uniform float kind of thing. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I thought it, it was, was. There you was know, something like that. He just. Sucked up the, sucked it up, and they had him on the side of the pool. He almost had, he he like uh, what's that called? Dry drowning, where yeah, yeah. he got him. They got him conscious. They got him alive. They had him stuffed. He got in the ambulance. He was you know cogent, and then uh, within the next hour or so, I thought he slowly just they they couldn't keep him going. Uh, <laughs> I will say that in two seventeen, my first ever dive, buddy in the pool with us we were doing buddy gear exchange in nine feet of water and my dive buddy embolized <laughs> who was that can't remember he didn't die he did embolize though and i did a dive yeah. tank trip with him and You're i sat he had 17 he got an embolism he got a pulmonary embolism and he got crackling in his chest on a free free swimmer's ascent and him and i went down to the dive chamber and he took the dive, and I was there, and he got rolled, medically rolled. He he ended up graduating. Cannot remember his name, but uh, I remember thinking, well, as a, it was a funny one because I think back on it now because it shows one's uh, comfort with discomfort. I remember sitting there. He took a full, you know, pure oxygen dive in the in the pressure tank for sixty minutes or longer. Uh, and then the decompression from there, no, no real decompression necessary, but you'd still do the system. And I just sat and watched. I'm coming right from the pool. I'm soaking wet. I was cold in the pool and there's no heating in that area. So I'm sitting there shaking like this, <laughs> you know, and the divers are there and the medics and everybody. And they're like, Hey, do you want a blanket? And my natural response was, no, I'm shivering. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm shivering. I'm fine. I was like, what? This isn't cold. I'm still shivering. I'm like well within the spectrum of comfort. This is, you know, I'm shivering. Why would I need a fucking blanket? <laughs> everything in Buzz is a trick. Are you really trying to I give just, me a blanket or are you going to give me a blanket and then tell the instructors that I took a blanket in, in, you know, in the uh, chamber? I just knew that I wasn't remotely cold enough to need a whoopee. And can you imagine if Decca or someone would have seen me in there with a blanket? The cost of a kind Corman giving me a blanket would have been a possibly terminal exposure to cold that could have broken me. Because yeah. everybody has limits. And everybody has cold, limits. You know, if you goof around with me in that temperature at that time, you know, a good hour of like steel pier or something like that, that could start out of curriculum, you know, when you're not ready for it, that could break a man. I, I'm not, nobody's so hard that they can't break. Fuck you. At you least I know I'm not. You, I tried to not Get in trouble. <laughs> you know what scared me the most? It buds. This is this is no bullshit. During Hell Week, that ice water they pour down the back of your shirt if you were at Chow and fell asleep. Oh yeah. I remember going into Chow being like, I'm not falling asleep now. That they ain't hit me with that mm -hmm. ice water. Not did not you any. get caught. Did you get caught with the uh brutally wonderful uh North Korean psychological mind trick where if your eyes lifted up and looked at the Ricky Lake or the reality television that was playing with your food tray in your hand, you got in the shower decon for 15 minutes? I can't say. You know, I lived in the shower decon. So there's... there's yeah. So there I was can't. a thing. You're in line. 
and you get your chow, you get your plate, and there's a tray, call it a, a, a line, a, a, a lane, call it, you know, 20 yards as you're leaving the chow hall line to get your seat, and you walk down this chute. In front of you are two instructors, and they had a notebook, and up over their right shoulder on your left was this massive big screen TV playing either Jerry Springer or Ricky Lake, and you're sitting there with your tray trying not to spill anything, and you're looking at them, and I was like, what are you looking for? And they're like, you'll see. Uh, no, and I looked up to the left, and they're like, got him. I was like, what's that? And they're like, you'll find out. And I never got caught again, because the people on that list, after chow, they'd be like, all right, and they'd read off the list. And if you don't know why you're on a list, you're just a moron. So I this- never could understand how people were on that list twice. <laughs> you're like, dude, don't look at the TV. Don't look at the TV. Don't look at the TV. Ah! And guys would get in it, and they you hear guys almost start crying. And then they had to sit quiet, knowing that they were going to get cold. And some guys couldn't get up off the chair because they knew it was bad. And they're going to have to get cold and wet because they looked at the TV. And those little tricks, little tricks. Psychological warfare at its best. I know this. Mm -hmm. I was in a decon shower every time. I don't think there was ever a time I didn't get in a decon shower. Like, I started in decon shower. I'd be the last one to go to medical inspection. I'd be like, oh, man, all right, let's get in the shower. And it was chilly. It was only 37 degrees that week. It was a little chilly out there. So It was brutal. That was. You remember when it hailed and snowed second night, or was it Wednesday night? It was some night. I was glorious. I remember when they gave us coats and hats. <laughs> I was like. You're like, how bad is it? <laughs> I'm like, shit, it got to be bad if we got there. They gave us coats and hats, bro. I just remember. I, I'm not gonna say yeah, no one ever seen a bud splash with coats and hats. I wasn't super cold, <laughs> you know, but I was. It didn't like, make any difference, by the way. That's what like, all that happened oh, is that we got it wet. We got they it wet. Run, they just made us run around Turner Field all night long because it was too cold. So your legs were fried. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, and we made the little boat. We just and they they gave us hot broth. And you couldn't eat the hot broth because it was fucking burning your tongue. Yeah, good times. And I was like, yo, what the fuck are we doing? And then we went from there out to the mud, and I was just like, oh. And, you know, and, like, Fellman was like, yo, came up to me. He's like, I- I'm fucking going to die out here. I'm like, okay, let's start doing PT. We started PTing in the mud. I, I was, uh, yeah. That's where Zen and I became good friends, in the mud. In the mud? Yep. I, uh, I can be warm if I'm still. So I've always been able to, even in, in buds, if I could just be still, I could like focus on that little core of heat and push it out at whatever. I mean, you were good at staying warm. I remember you being body checked after spending 30 minutes in the decon and being like 98. Uh, although you could have been lying. Probably were lying. Good point. Um, but yeah, you. Uh-uh, I was in there for fucking two hours and 45 minutes. Did I they- remember they... Did a temperature on you came out and you're like 98 bitches. Oh no no no! I didn't <laughs> I know you were lying about that. When 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 I didn't learn about that temperature. If I did, then fu- no, I was cold as fuck, bro. I remember falling in the middle of formation and letting Ryan run the class because I couldn't even fucking move. But yeah. I've, we found out. Uh, Buck told us after Hell Week, he came in the room and was like, ah. You motherfucker, you were 90, whatever, 99 or 98.6. They were fucking pissed. We had to have a safety yeah. stand down and shit. They weren't allowed to get you cold anymore. I was like, oh. Oh, that was 98, you know, what you're supposed to be. Uh, Jack Hampshire got down to 86, which was criminally legal, uh, dangerous, like wait, he died. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you remember how his eye sockets were in his forehead? Did you see him when they took him away? No, you did. I mean, he was... I had, I, never, I had him around. I don't even no, know he, how he, he he was dying. That's and so it was after he almost died. Medically, you know, under nine, under eighty six, you're you're really talking. <laughs> you know, you're you're rewarm the body before you legally declare it dead. He was still moving. Uh, he got hyped out like three more times, and they had to eventually just stop getting Jack cold. Yeah. Um, but that's when we just hung out on Turner Field. And the instructors are like, holy shit, we are literally going to kill these guys. Um, yeah, yeah. But they didn't like us very much. No, I, it, so was, I, it was my fault, Dan. 
It was my fault. Ah, yeah, whatever. I mean, it was fun. I didn't mind. I fixed the, I fixed my getting beat and falling asleep at the chow hall. You know how I fixed that? How? I just immediately volunteered for boat watch. I would eat my food and I would relieve the boat watch first. And I would not whisk, uh, ask for a boat relief. So I would do the full, I would eat my, he had about an hour in the chow hall. Yeah, yeah. It would only take about 15 minutes and then I would get up. And I would spend the whole time, everybody else was inside being warm. I would spend it stretching on boat watch, stretching out my hip flexors. Oh. And I, I didn't have the temptation of quitting and getting up because I was on boat watch. I did boat watch every single meal that it was uh, the second. And I, I asked my boat leader, whoever, was like, no, I got it. I'm fine. I don't need a relief. And uh, it beat that psychological weakness of wanting, of having, being nice and happy and warm. I just didn't want to be warm. I don't want to be warm. I'm happy. I like it like this. I love it here. Uh, you know, same with the same with the mud pits. I was hiding out with Zinn, and uh, I was like, just hide. It's mud. They where were you hiding it. at? Were you just laying in the mud and like not doing it? In nothing? the mud. <laughs> and they'd be like, come here. And I'd be like, they can't come get us. He's like, what? I was like, how are they going to get us? I see you. I know who you are. Like, there's no way they know who we are, dude. We're covered in mud. What are they going to do to us? Get us muddy? And I was like, just, we just backed away deeper into the mud, into the dark. And they were like, furious. But what? We're in Navy SEAL training. We're hiding from the enemy in the mud. We're cold. And, and, and. And uh, he was like, you can do that? I was like, I don't know, but how are they going to, you know, do you really think they want to get in this mud and ruin their fancy clean uniforms? They don't want to be cold and miserable. It's like Thursday night or Wednesday night. It's horrible. Trust one me. Of, they don't want to be here any more than us. One of my best right. wins, my best wins was in Hell Week at Breakout. Yeah. I remember yeah. they were screaming at me, get a muster. I said mm -hmm. muster. I looked around. There was a thousand <laughs> people running around, right? <laughs> M Explosions, <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Random students so, being dragged off by instructors as well. I ran to the beach, and I said, "Muster." Well, and and then I realized you can't take a muster, and so I was running back, <laughs> and I said, "You know what? I think I can hide." And I lay down at that column on the grinder underneath the smoke. There was like a level of smoke. Mm -hmm. and I just laid down there, man. Then I found a garden hose. I was spraying the instructors down and shit. I'd, I'd pop up and spray the instructors a little bit and go back down into the smoke. I saw Ryan Angle. I grabbed him. I pulled him in with me. I said, hey, Ryan, man, I've been here like 35 minutes. It's fucking awesome. I'm just sitting here. He's like, yeah, out of your fucking mind, man. I'm like, dude, well, I mean, what are they going to do, right? Like, you know, Ryan Angle, and he ain't staying in that smoke. He got up and ran off. I mean, I laid in that smoke for the whole breakout. I, I was there for like an hour. And then eventually I was like, man. <laughs> you're going to have to stop this. But it doesn't, you're not stopping anything. That's the thing. Um, I'll go back to instructor Gekka. Uh, I watched him use this line on student after student after student and break them and make them quit. He'd say, go get wet and come back to me. You'd do it. And then he'd look at the top of your hat. And if the top of your hat wasn't wet, you didn't duck your head all the way. Fair, you know, fair. You got <laughs> wet, but, you know, you didn't get all the way wet. And he would go on his rant. It was a really well rehearsed. I've got you. You're mine. I'm going to be on you forever. This has been, you know, and then it goes on and on. This has been 15 minutes. You think you can take four days of that? I've never, you know, he'd just go on and on and on. And he only really wanted to see you just suffer for like 15 to 20 minutes. And then he'd be like, all right, good job, fuck off. You know, and you'd be like, oh, he was lying. But I've seen people break at like the seven and a half minute mark because Instructor Gekka said he's going to be with them forever. I like how long is forever? Surely we have something to do next in two or three hours. I never saw him abuse his authority, but by God, was he scary. <laughs> he was just such a presence. I'm going to tell you my drown proofing story or my uh, life saving story with him. Okay. <laughs> Did you fight him? So, so, 
So you remember he had like 60, he probably had 30 pounds of weight on his belt because he was having to swim hard to stay up on the surface, right? With fins. With fins on. And a wetsuit. He and had to wetsuit. swim hard. Yeah, he was swimming. Because <laughs> I remember he was like this, right? And I was like, they were like, Zwig, you got Gekka next. Okay. I remember, you know, I had to do the life-saving shit. I got him. Mm -hmm. What'd you do? Back control or front control? What was the uh, one you had? It was back because I had my arm around his neck. And we went to the bottom. And I remember. <laughs> you remember, I hold my breath for a long time. And I was like. Now you're good at that. I was like. And then I kicked off the bottom, and his feet never left the bottom of the pool. And I said, "Oh man!" I'm, I said, "You know, <laughs> this was my thought. I'm gonna walk him to the side. I'm gonna walk him over there." So I That'll started. Be. I started walking, and we were probably, I don't know, maybe only like 45 seconds in, and he started fidgeting. And you remember they told you that. <laughs> You had to oh, control yeah. them, no, right? You're, not, you're controlling them. You're fighting them. Bro, let me tell you something. I put that mug. I locked the two hands up. I had him tight in a, in a, in a, in a camel clutch from behind. And he I was, was going to die. He was, <laughs> I was walking him over there. And, and I was like, he started really shaking and trying to get away. I just kept in there. I was I wasn't walking very fast, or I, I might have made it like one segment of, of the lane lines, right? Like I might have made it like. Six feet, <laughs> and I remember he panicked. He panicked. Dude, drowning is scary. So, but I, I, I was like, well, I'm gonna hold him a little bit past panic, right? Like I'm gonna hold mm -hmm. him, keep him safe. And, and I remember he cut his belt off. Oh my god, he just full on quit the exercise. He he put cut his belt off, and so then I kicked off the bottom to try to make it to the surface. And I couldn't get him off the bottom. And then he was fucking like, he literally was just, you could tell it was sheer panic. I let go of him. And we both got to the surface at the same time. And he was like, ah, ah, so funny. Ah. and all the instructors were looking at him, just kind of chuckling. Like, <laughs> he was like, you failed. You failed. And I was like, hmm. And I got to the shore, and all the instructors were looking at me. And they were like, <laughs> "Maybe we'll." I, uh, my swim comp. You know, I'm a. I was a little guy, so there was no, no honor in beating my ass, right? You know, I mean, I was 165 pounds, maybe. Um, I'd never developed my physique, so I'd never done sports or worked out before the Navy. Uh, neither here nor there. Tell everybody where you came from, Dan. Tell, tell oh, good lord! I, I was raised. I was raised overseas to missionaries and at a young age was taught that competitiveness was bad. So like if we were playing kickball and I really tried, I would be uh, reprimanded for that. So I needed something in my life when I decided to leave being a child in a mission field. Uh, I needed something. I'd, I'd passed high school, you know, I was 18 when I came to the U S and I wanted something that, could give me what I thought was a worthy approximation to a high school football experience. I thought everybody in, has played some kind of sport, done something tough. Everybody's tougher than me. What can I do? So I went to the library. Yeah, I'm that kind of kid. I went to the library and I started reading what is a reasonable physical challenge. And ooh, there's a military. And ooh, these seals seem difficult. And... I thought, you know what? I bet if I do SEAL training, then I won't feel like I'd never done anything physical. And my bros and cousins that, you know, played high school fucking basketball or football won't make fun of me for not having any, you know, physicality in my background. And the I Browns. thought, that sounds like a good idea. I'll do that. <laughs> so I want, uh, I want everybody to yeah. know I went to, I went to high school with your cousins. So yeah, no, they're good people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Charles writes a little bit of a uh, a protected oyster of an environment. By the way, come on, bro! What a fabulous oh. learning experience that you can get there. Oh, you get a you know, great that learning. small classroom. The ability to actually have a discourse with your professors. Um, I never went, but my little brother did. My father did, and it was a. I I would have loved to have gone and played sports, but I grew up in Asia. Your father went to Charles Wright. Yes, sir. I didn't know that. I just knew Chris and the crew did. 
So well, my father is uh, Lissa Tomervik's brother. So the Tomervics, my yeah. father is. Yep. Uh, so Lissa Tomervik married Dr. Tomervik. She was Kelly before that. Yep. But uh, you know, Alan Brown's her parents, and uh, my dad was in early class of Charles Wright. So with the founders of Charles Wright, founders of Charles Wright were still in the whole experience at that time. Crazy. When you just grew like, up, how much how much working out did you do before you went to Buds? It was against the rules. I did push-ups and pull-ups when nobody was looking. Like, you know, 50. Uh no, I I the first time I ever ran three miles, I odometered it out at the golf course in Tacoma. I, I, my grandparents lived on the golf course there on American Lake. Yep. Um, I, I'm sure you know it because you went to Charles Wright. Uh, and I, you know, bought a, I had a pair of work boots and I put on a pair of jeans and I ran that three miles in a reason, a mile and a half. And I did it in like under 12 minutes. And I felt that that was a not overly exertive effort that I gave and that I should theoretically be able to reduce that time with enough effort. You know, I did some pull-ups and I could do seven or eight, which seemed to be what the standard needed. And I could do 50, 60 push-ups and 50, 60 sit-ups. And I thought, okay, well, it says it's a progressive program. I guess they'll make me big and strong. <laughs> you absolutely are the anomaly. <laughs> absolutely. Now, I'm going to yeah. have, I'm going to have 50 million, people, 50 million people hit me up and tell me, see, I told you, you don't have to be in shape when you go. And I'm yeah, gonna they're like, fucking wrong. They're fucking wrong. I'll tell you that. I'm gonna be uh -huh. like, look, don't don't be like Mr. Miyagi over there, because Mr. No, Miyagi, boy. he different. He had a different I, experience. I, yeah, mentality, yeah. mindset, uh, getting comfortable with losing, getting comfortable with suffering. Uh, you don't want to be strong, you know. Um, just getting comfortable with pain, and most people aren't. It's a lot better to be strong. <laughs> I mean, I got there um, worse. So because I was not physically prepared, I blew out my bicep tendonitis, like tennis elbow, in my first Bud's PT at PTRR. We did a three-hour workout. It was an uh, hour of legs, or no, hour of push-ups, hour of abs, you know, flutter kicks. And then we were on the bars for an hour. And they had us at the end, you know, you're doing your sets of six, your sets of three, your sets of whatever. When we were down to nothing, where nobody could be on the bar, your buddy would hold you on the bar as you held a curl yeah, and yeah, you, you would sink off the you negative. negatives. You're doing negatives. Yeah. After that workout, I could not do a solitary pull-up for months, months. I don't know how I classed up. We needed to do seven at the pool to get into first phase. I was crippled. I'd been into, I'd been into medical. I tried to get massaged. I, I could not literally, when I pulled, my arm would go, uh, uh, that was it. That was the maximum of the muscular connection I could get. Um, and I just stuck with it, which means when we were doing pull-ups, I was getting beat. I was getting wet. I was doing eight counts, you know, and we did a lot of pull-ups. I was hanging from the bar. I was being punished. Um, when we classed up at the pool, we swam first. Yeah. And we did the pull-ups after the swim. The swim must have loosened up my tendons enough that I couldn't, I didn't know how to do a side stroke either. So I did the breaststroke. Um, I still, I didn't know how to use a side stroke. Yeah, good times. Uh, I did the breaststroke. I passed. That wasn't a problem. It's not a very hard time. Uh and I was able to eke out seven with a little bit of a kip, but there's a certain je ne sais quoi the instructors are looking for. And a lot of it has to do with effort, <laughs> effort, you know, effort. And I gave effort and I never failed an O course. So immediately learned how to do the O course in more of a rock climber style with extended arms. You don't need your biceps to do a rope climb. You need to do the technique correctly. Uh, so it actually really improved my O-course capability because I didn't smoke my arms 
doing the O course. And when eventually I healed and I could do pull-ups, you know, I was never great. Um, the O course was easy. So the O course was a rest for me. Yeah. The standard was a good two. I was not going to win. You know, I wasn't in that guys making the five minute, sub five minutes, sub five thirty. You know, there's a real com- competition there to break the record. I was comfortably sub 10, which is all you need to be to pass. If you're in the eight or like even the eight fifties, you don't care. You're clean, you know, and if you can do an eight without clean. more effort, clean, just let it happen. Eight, you know? 30 all day, my dude, eight 30. I, I don't know what my times were, but I knew that I know that I was clean, comfortably clean. So yeah. everybody has the ability to be phenomenal at an evolution at any given time, but there's more than one dummy. So, you know, if you win and, and the first evolution of the day, <laughs> that might be the last thing you ever do. And that might be the last breath you take. Um, the 14 mile got me. I, uh, the 14 miler got you at the island. Yep. I let my ego catch me. And, uh, hey, Clint Bruce, got, we jogged that whole thing, man. Really? Yeah. I, I got up on the front and I ran like shoulder to shoulder with the instructor and for the first time in forever, I wasn't in pain and I felt good. And I like, I held the high pace with him, like almost shoulder to shoulder. And I never ran a good step again for like three weeks. <laughs> I was just that fatigued. Um, after that, like flight, flights, I'd start going and I'd make it like 50 steps. And then boom, I just, I had no muscular cap- capacity. Uh, just, it was just like on empty. Your body was so drained if you're a bud student you need 20 pull-ups you need to be 20 pull-ups comfortably 100 push-ups needs to be something you can do in multiples of two or three you need to be able to do 50 push-ups you know with a one minute break 50 push-ups maybe 10 times you need to be you need to be there because and then you need to be a comfortable seven minute miler you really do need to just have a nice you know, I don't know. Was that a twenty-eight four mile? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you need to be able to run seven. You need to have those numbers, man, nope. or else you're just going to suffer. You'll get there. I got there, but it it was painful, like so painful all the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I tell people like I don't want to relive my buds experience, right? Like I would have much rather. And this is the thing that I kill myself on, Dan. And we talked about this last time we talked. If I had just, I didn't have enough thorough thought process on what I was going to to even have any respect for it, right? I want it to be as hard as possible, but- The Navy's I, sneaky like that. You just don't, don't think that anything can be as hard as the fucking seals are. It's yeah, the like, fucking Navy. How hard could it be, this fucking shit show, lazy, fat experience, and suddenly it's- On the beach, it's, on the beach, on the beach. Weird. Yeah, but I wish- I, difficult. <laughs> I wish I would have went home to Washington State. If I had just went home for three months to Washington State, I would have fucking showed up and murdered it. Like, I'd have been running my route. I'd have been running my long runs. I'd have been in the fucking Pierce County and the Pierce College swimming pool. Mm -hmm. I would have showed up in phenomenal shape. And I was just like, I worked out three times, came off the ship, worked out three times in Norfolk. It was rainy. It was miserable. I was at my boy's house. It kind of sucked. And I was just like, you know what? Let's just send it. And let's just drive to San Diego and get this fucking thing going. Yeah, I did. Six months at Great Lake. You know, the, the, the PTs that we went to with the with Bud, um, they were just beatdown sessions. They weren't I was too ignorant and too young and had no sports background in any way, shape, or form. I just didn't understand the importance or what it even meant to be strong. You know, I, I work out now and, and have, you know, ever since and I, I've developed quite a strong musculature and frame now. I'm a I'm a pretty strong man now 20 years later i I would have been nice if from like 14 or 12 to 18 i had really developed that physique put on you know 10 20 pounds of good muscle good strong muscle that that could be there as fuel as padding as energy as opposed to just really living on tendon tensile strength and fast twitch and you know they're really perishable things uh needing to have a lot but, of food and I mean it was healthy, but it was hard. It was just but hard. but now like fuck you now you're a savage. You know what I'm, I'm saying? A, like like I'm physically still, like still you're do fucking, it. Yeah, like you <laughs> fucking savage now. Like I'm fucking broke. I can't even dude. I tried to do a pull up the other day. 
my right elbow is degenerating, like all the bone is going away. So I'm getting ready. I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get a stem cell shot. I think that's the answer. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to. I just. I'm gonna get an inner. So an inner bone marrow stem cell shot. My dude said mm -hmm. it's been doing phenomenal on regrowing cartilage and bone. So. So I just went about six weeks of not grappling because my ACL and meniscus were were pretty gacked up. Uh, there was a lot of it was hanging up and it, it hurt. I got an MRI. Um, the doctor said I had a partially torn ACL. I heard the word partial, partial, and uh, and that I needed the stem cells. I agree. I just don't have the seventy four hundred bucks he wants. No, no, so no, no. I, hey, fly down to Ryan Light. It's thirty thirty five hundred, bro. He'll hook you up. Good God! All right, I'll I'll have to do that. I'll, Ryan, I'll just have Ryan to Light, do it. Ryan, I'll send you the number, bro. Ryan Light and Prom will hook you I, up. I got. And, but, I just put myself through a pretty aggressive therapy session, and I'm back in the gym hard. Uh, I used the bands. I did a really, I did a lot of therapy. You know, I did 500 kettlebell swings after my therapy, um, with my 32 kilo, kilo bell. And I thought, you know what? That's healthy enough. I did that pain free. 32, uh, 500 swings of 32 kilograms. Yeah. But I took my time. I do a ladder. I'd like to do ladders. So I did 10, then 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, hundred. And that's actually more than 500, but I stopped at 500. I started failing around set uh, 70. So I, you know, I have to do 30 or 40, put the bell down, but that's just minimum enough to write it on the chalkboard. And I'm doing a uh, full heart rate recovery in between those rounds. So it's not so arduous, um, but it, it, you know, it's good work. Um, but I was working my knee through all the different ranges of motion, you know, short kettlebell swing. Uh, I just treat myself like a cripple in the, in the gym. So I just, I, I pull guard. I don't, I don't have a guard, <laughs> but it's making my jujitsu a lot better. Uh, I just surrender positions and I get out of things as opposed to trying to dominate and, you know, play any kind of takedown game. Um, at, at, at my age, at, at 47, I just have to stay away from Connecticut, Connecticut stuff, man, because Connecticut. I'm 52. Whatever. I'm 52. <laughs> it, anything Connecticut dynamic? Uh, nope. Run fast, get hurt. Jump, box jumps, get hurt. Like, no, nah, bro. I'm with I, you, I, kettlebell I, swings. Something very I Also, a bit of an idiot and a bit of a dick so the way i like to roll is pretty hard the way i like to wrestle is hard i like to hit people in the sternum with my head and knock them over and that's all well and good until you give yourself a stinger that literally has you twitching on the floor as the left side of your body is numb and you're like okay maybe i learned a different way now <laughs> you know there's nothing like having a full body stinger that lasts over a minute where you're just twitching in full neural lockdown you're like okay no more head pumping people <laughs> you know it's it's time to pull guard <laughs> absolutely brother absolutely. You're like i just can't i i can't i can't go to wrestling anymore either uh absolutely. it's just too dynamic it, it just hurts. yeah bro like like hamstrings and quads are getting torn in wrestling trying to sprawl or trying to hip nope. in like arms no 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 like i went to wrestling practice i'm struggling to do somersaults bro like i do a somersault my head gets scrambled i wake up i'm like Ehh. i'm like oh my god i can't do no somersaults no more you know so somersaulting jesus christ where are you huh that's, that's young people stuff man <laughs> I, mean, I'm out there. I got a fucking nine-year-old dude like i'm not i'm, I'm out there with a nine-year-old <laughs> Shit, like I don't know what to tell you. Like I got young people uh, in this house, you know. Hardest roles I have are with ex wrestlers. You're like twenty. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah they're a awesome. good, a good twenty year old blue belt. Oh, uh, who's a wrestler? <laughs> this is good. who's 160 pounds. You're like this is going to be so much work. This, Even if you're yeah. good light, just keeping up with them is just exhausting. Just movement, position, movement. <laughs> you're, talk, you're talking about because the wrestler just knows body position so much better. Yeah, they're just going to move. They're not going to, you know, they're going to always be doing something. And if yeah. you're being a good partner, you're trying to give the same energy back. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't want to be a lazy fish and just let some poor kid not get any work. I had pneumonia in buds. Oh, let's talk about your, you. So I was trying to explain yeah. this to some people. How many people out of the, I think we got out of hell week with like 28. 20 something. 28, I think. How many people had pneumonia? Dale Wooden. I said about 25%. Like seven of you had pneumonia. 
So I, I didn't have it right out of buds. I, I I did have it, but I didn't. I wasn't diagnosed. What's that phase where we draw the maps after buds, which is horrible, and they make us more cold and miserable? Uh, um, surf, after surf, hell week. Uh, surf, surf, fucking tide computation. Surf, it had a name or whatever it was. I don't know yep. what it was called. Cartography. That was worse than hell Bruh. week for me because I. I thought that was the dumbest shit in the world. The hand. I'm left handed. It can't draw. Yeah, so I spent up. I was up all night failing. You know, nothing like spending all night drawing a shitty map and then being told you suck. Do it again. Um, so all of that contributed. I came out of the water after having failed a swim that got ganked because of the fog. The next time we were doing just a regular uh, tide tables computation, you know, the marking and everything, I came out of the water. It was daytime. I hacked. And I'd already failed a, a no course. I'd slipped off the rope on the swing. I just, I kept slipping off the rope, you know, because your O2s, you got no O2 saturation and you can't have any grip. Yep. I hacked and I had bloody sputum. And I was like, I went running to one of the instructors saying, Structure so so, Structure so so, I'm not a skit bag. I'm not a skit bag. Look, look, look. I have pneumonia. <laughs> I was thrilled that I had pneumonia and I had an excuse. For why I wasn't keeping up. And what they do? They just put you on Z pack and then kept you moving, or uh, I didn't get bumped. I got roll. I didn't know. Um, Z pack. No wet no shit. No wet shit. So oh. I did a week of not getting wet oh. and not exerting myself. I went on. I went to everything. I did everything, but um, we weren't supposed to get wet. I wasn't supposed to get wet. Uh, you know what's crazy? Like, like as the OIC, I don't remember anybody else's peril, right? Like, like you had pneumonia. Like, like if you asked me to describe anybody else's peril, I couldn't do it, right? Like, I, I was trying to survive myself, and like unless it was something like right in front of me, I'd be like, "Fuck, I don't know." Dan's not getting wet right now, you know. Like that's where we're at. Dan's not getting wet. That's because you were unusually targeted we all thought that was you know um but they had to beat us all at the same time so i mean it was a do people have you had somebody discuss our particular buds class and the special treatment that you got no i i I, I have a bunch i have a bunch of people telling me that i had it easy at buzz (laughs) <laughs> and, then, and then Travis Lively, Travis, Travis Lively will say Jake had the hardest buds ever, and then a bunch of guys will say I had it easy. Like they, I was a diversity hire. That's what I've been hearing. I was a diversity hire in buds. Well, for one, there was like four other black guys in our class that yep. you know weren't messed with as much because they weren't the OIC. Wasn't the Master Chief black? Yeah, yeah, Massachusetts <laughs> McGowan. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so absolutely. There was, you know, uh, Warren Officer, well, I'll say his fucking name, Warren Officer Turcott was not a kind man to you or anyone for that matter, though. Let's give him his due. He was pretty mean to everyone. Um, yeah, he, he tried to get me. He like, might have targeted you a little special. Uh, that's all right. I, I, I ate 1,500 eight count, or 1,500 eight count bodybuilders in preparation for him jumping me. And if he had jumped me after eight, 15 or 18 eight count bodybuilders, I was going to kill him. So I did a thousand body go- eight count bodybuilders with you that day coming back from the pistol range. I opened my mouth and somehow got involved in that particular beating. <laughs> was that, that was the a squirt, good gun, squirt gun incident? Yes, it was. I was not. Everybody that did something that wrong, wrong that day was involved in the eight count bodybuilders. And uh, our lives were special because of your robust personality. Listen, listen. I, I liked it. I like knowing that United States Navy SEALs hated our class special and were making it extra hard for us. And they were happy to let us know that the mothers would be like, you guys are just going to have to get hard. Because this is going to happen, and there's nothing I can do for you. Once you learn to take the pain, so I don't know that I'd have been able to handle a bud that was more time specific. You know, no, I'd have been fine. But it was just in the world of cruelty 
and pain and punishment. And it was just like a long hazing session, the whole buds for us. Travis, Travis said when he came it back, was awesome. when he came back in two, 234, class 234, he said, Jake, it was, it was like, he says like one tenth. He said, I didn't even think I was in buds. He said, after spending four months in your, in, in class 217, I didn't think I was in buds. And uh, you Jake, said, I you can, said when you I, rolled in the 218. 218. 218 felt like summer camp, fucking summer camp. The, on uh, Laguna Hills, L- Laguna. Um, in the mountains up there, when we do our land nav and all that, you remember yeah. how we just, there was not a moment of free time. We were just beat ever, incessantly, ever. incessantly, you know, I mean, we're doing long navigation humps with heavy rucks twice a day, all day long, pretty much. But we're doing in four. between, we were doing four in be- a day. Yeah. But in between, we were doing eight count bodybuilders and relay races and buddy carries and up and down the hill and PTs and long runs. You know, and nighttime navigation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No, we were just at the breaking point of physicality. I mean, it, it was, I think that not having a developed physique might have helped me more. Because you know how guys with big muscles and stuff get all pumped up and they can't move anymore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I got lucky on just tensile strength of tendons and joints and just doing it and doing it and doing it because I, a lot of bigger, better, stronger athletes than me their bodies just collapsed on them. It was a young enlisted class. I don't know how Gonzo did it. He's a stud. You have to, Jesus Christ. He was, he was 30. Like what was he? 37. 30? I think 36? he had a waiver, man. Ooh. He was ancient. I just remember ancient. how hurt he was all the time. I'd be like, damn, Gonzo. Like He didn't whine. No, he, he never complained. So, never complained. Jesus Christ, that was a good yeah. man. He was a great leader, too. He He... He really, by the way, they wouldn't let him LPO in 218. So we all got rolled to 218, him as well. Yep. And uh, he was told, sit in the back, relax. <laughs> they would barely even let him be like a boat crew. You know, he's like, no, you go away. <laughs> Other people need to learn to be leaders. You've got that down. Yeah, yeah, he killed it. He killed it. Who Crazy. took over from him for you? Uh, Wiley. Wiley. Wiley? Wiley, really? Okay. Yeah, he was That's a right, he was an E5. Seen an E5. So he did fine. He tried to fuck me at the island, but Ryan yeah, Ambrose took care of him. <laughs> I, I I don't know if it's been said enough. I'll you know I'm I'm nobody. I'm just a guy that went through buds with you, but it was special. Our buds was special, very specifically because of you. Uh, it was hard, and they let us know that we are doing this because Jake Zwig is your OIC. Um, on the island, there was a open call to pretty much get rid of you, and then this can all stop. But all throughout time, they would always try to, but that's what made it so good, and they respected us so much for it. You know, it's easy to make one guy the enemy and say it's all his fault and see if the class turns on that person. They didn't, we didn't. You, you officers might have had some closed room meetings where you bitched at each other. I don't know. But the leadership component of that class stuck together, and it just became a gimmick. You know, it just became a gimmick. The fact that Ryan Angled couldn't call a coin toss to save his life and that we had to do hundreds of push-ups because he couldn't get it right. I mean, come on, man. What did he get, like 10 times in a row? Ten the wrong times in a row, tail With man. two witnesses making sure. I mean, like our own coin. I mean, that people were just like, come on. Get it right one time. Man. I mean, but those kinds of gimmicks, we would be we would be in class two hours past end of training doing push-ups because Ryan Angled couldn't fucking call a coin toss. <laughs> but it just became part of what we did. And I loved it. So for a little missionary kid that had never done sports who wanted a good, hard experience, I got it. So I got what I was looking for. Um, I had a lot more growing up to do in life, and hey, maybe one day I'll grow up. But uh, that part was fun. <laughs> I, I got a kick out of it. But yeah, no, it was. I don't think anybody's had the direct targeted attention of the instructors the way you had. And anybody that hasn't been doesn't understand that targeted attentions of instructors is a bad thing. Uh, you know, everybody is doing their best to not 
be focused upon because nobody has the ability to survive indefinite physical activity. It's just, <laughs> you know, it, it, it don't matter who you are. Go to the gym, do as many of an exercise as you can, and now get told that you need to do that 10 more times. Get started. You know, and that's literally what it's like. You'll do something. You'll be like, wow, that was, I think that was absolutely the most I could ever do. And you're told, yeah, right. Well, we're going to do that 10 more times. You suck. And you get people who quit. And then somehow by like the seventh session of that, you're like, okay, I might not die. And you start seeing light that it's possible that my body can do more than I thought it could. But that was practically every day with us. And I will say, because of you. Um, <laughs> And it wasn't particularly unfair, but, you know, we kind of asked for it. You know, we were bad. It wasn't bad, per se, but... You yeah, know, we, we were bad. We, I mean, we would tell the instructors that they couldn't hurt us. We can't hurt us. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go another one. Let's, let's take another round of that bad boy. But, you know, it's funny but, to me. But once you get like that, what are you going to do? Back off? No. And, and that's what they're looking for. They're trying to build savages, and they did. Hey, I'm a different person now than I was then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, everybody is. That, that's something... So I agree with much of what I've, I've watched your podcast podcast over the years, and we've spoken lots. I agree with what you say when they don't make Navy SEALs. Uh, in my case, I was formatively changed by the process. You know, I had never done anything up until that point. So while I wasn't made into a Navy SEAL, there was a lot of carving away. You know, uh, a lot was revealed to me about what I could be and what I should be. And I've learned more taking that template to follow throughout the years of my own individual growth over the years and, and always having that baseline of knowledge and, and learning. So not to the same extremities, but to know that you can always push yourself to be better. And if you fail at something, it's really your own fault. And it's your own fault because you just didn't give it the effort that you should have. Because Come on, we know you could do better. And uh, then, so I'm, I'm gonna tell you, you are like there's anomalies, right? Like everybody bitches because I showed up out of shape. There's one thing of having just wrestled on the all navy wrestling team four months before I showed up to Buds, and then going on a ship for three months of it and coming and showing up out of shape, but having a strong baseline of of athletic fucking training. And then there's you who just showed up out of fucking the foreign lands, missionary style. No competitive background, no competitive athletics, you know, running in jeans and some work boots because you don't know what the fuck you're getting ready for. And then showing up and then like, I'll be honest with you, like we all had struggles because of El Nino, right? Like El Nino made yes. that slams like other. However, like you never stood out as a guy that was like, oh, my God, Dan is struggling, you know, like. Dude, no, no, I, 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 I was fine. Uh until those third phase swims that, you know, I remember the, the swim that I failed that rolled me, four people passed. <laughs> you know, four people passed the swim and uh, it was you and Angled and I, no, you and Zen. Zen, and Zen towed you across and Angled and who was his swim Murphy. buddy? Murphy. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, Angled, Angled was not even a human. No, no, he's um, not. He wasn't. That, that is a, freak of an athletic mutant just an exquisite specimen i remember watching him do pull-ups after hell week and everybody was shocked that a pull-up could be done <laughs> he yeah, could do yeah. like five or six still and it was it was like whoa that's a superman because you know i, I mean we, we could barely I walk i think he did 50 50 if i'm not mistaken on that when we on our little out processing test i know he did 223 push-ups yeah but in three minutes you know, I mean, again, two these minutes. are two minutes. Wasn't it two he, minutes? I can't remember. This is a long time ago. No, I mean, I've never seen anybody. And again, we're there. So you get a really good spectrum of humanity when it comes to bone and tendon tensile strength and resilience. He was just such an anomalous athlete. He was so strong, so fast and so consistent. Um, that's a special person. But hey, good luck to him. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you know he's smart a and nice and empathetic. You know he's a functional Shocking. quadriplegic now. Is he? Yeah, yeah, he broke his neck. He got broke his neck in a really bad Paris. Uh, yeah, I know he broke his neck, but I know that he recovered. I'm just surprised. Yeah, that... he's, he's one of four functioning quadriplegics. 
Yeah, but it's, you know, ain't going to break fucking Angle's neck. Like, that's going to make a difference. He's Superman. Yeah, fair enough. Fair oh. enough. Fair enough. Love you, man. Keep kicking ass. All right, folks. My man, Dan Brown, class 217, ended up graduating with 218. 